In a world plagued by reboots, haunted by sequels, dominated by the same old shit. Get ready for an original podcast that will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. Starring Ginger Josh, Adam the Hare, and introducing the immortal Frank. Hold on to your butts. It's the Game Rage Movies TV Podcast. Once again, for all you movies and TV lovers out there, we're back with another episode of the Game Rage Movies slash TV podcast. My name's Josh. I'm here today with the hair, Adam. Shit, man. I was a little concerned. I was, I was looking for the uh, the notes that I had. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I was looking through, and I just spaced a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know if it was because I just pocket dialed or what the fuck happened, but my notes got pushed all the way down, like, no, please don't. Oh, no, please. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, if you want to hear other podcasts that we don't talk about our notes on, or some that we do, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com and you can hear the full menu of podcasts that we have available. I mean, tons of them. There's like 18,000 podcasts on our network. Thumbs and Ammo being the newest one. That's <laughs> going to be coming out pretty soon. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram and TikTok, at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X, at Game Rage Mag. Fuck, I keep forgetting the YouTube. YouTube is at Game Rage Magazine. Shit, that's a big one. It is. It's, you know, it's not just a big one, Adam. It's the biggest one. All right? That is the biggest... Like platform in the history of platforms. Yes. So, anyways, go to game at Game Rage Magazine on YouTube as well. All of the podcasts are there as well. Adam's at All Gas No Trash official. All Gas No Trash. All Gas No Trash podcast. Anyways, all right, we got the Bear season two dose episodes seven and eight. True story. You got the notes, Playboy. So get us rocking and rolling. All right. Now we're back to our regularly scheduled programming with regular yeah. length fucking episodes. I did feel like number eight was longer though. I felt like that was like a 40 something minute episode too. I don't remember. All right, I'll look it up while you're talking about the okay. episode seven. But anyway, go ahead. So we start off with episode seven with, uh, we get this, vo- the voice of Coach K from Duke overlaid on top of you know whatever the fuck is going on yeah and he's speaking about uh the keys to success and he notes that changing being on a team and listening are the keys to winning itself um and sid sid is in the this um secret lair kitchen that she's been working at yeah she asked some friend if she could uh, work on her menu while while the, the restaurant itself is being worked on. And she stumbles upon something. We don't exactly know what it is. She's just kind of putting things together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we get Carmi, who sends Richie over to this restaurant. I actually forget the name of the restaurant, but it's somebody that he has worked with in the past. So it's kind of the same thing, same deal with Marcus, except Marcus went to Copenhagen to go work at a restaurant that his buddy Luca uh, worked at as well. But right. for Richie, he's got a different assignment. And he has to go to this restaurant, and this place is so high-end. It, it It's sterile and cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very fucking weird. Um so Richie's greeted by the staff and prompted to clean forks like immediately. So they give him a whole get up and that's all he does for a few days is just forks. wiping forks or cleaning forks. So uh, 
we're reminded of the every second counts. And presumably this person that is the restaurant, it was senior to both Luca and Carmi themselves. Um, so I'm, this is where I'm guessing every second counts came from was this person. Or maybe it was somebody that everybody knew that includes Chef Terry, uh, Carmi, and Luca. That yeah. They got it from somebody else. Like, right. But anyways, but it's in this restaurant as well. Yeah. yeah. So Richie is interning at, at this uh, the best restaurant in Chicago. And uh, Richie is combative to this guy named Garrett, who is uh, one of the servers at the restaurant. And uh, we're seeing, in the midst of all this, we're seeing the bear evolving and changing. For all the people that work within the bear itself, the staff and chef, Carmi and, and Sid, as they're evolving, the restaurant is evolving as well. It's becoming yeah. more sophisticated. It's, it's becoming a high-end restaurant, I mean, though it hasn't even started, but that's the motivation is to become a three, three Michelin star restaurant. So Richie's bitching about how he's been cleaning forks for numerous days and Garrett, who's the server, he takes Richie outside and he says, if you don't want to fucking be here, you don't have to be here. I love doing this. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Because this is what this is the this is the thing that gives me purpose. Uh so then we cut back to Richie kind of gathering himself together to go back and start wiping more, more force and shit. And then he gets to see all the servers and the chefs having this round table meeting. And they're talking about notes of each specific person. Every single person uh, in the staff is like looking into all the guests that they're going to end up having. Um and I think my favorite part about this scene is um, they're really driving accountability and transparency within the restaurant staff itself. Uh, everybody's kind of pointing out flaws like the sm- the smudges. Just, yeah, and the smudge on the plate. Smudges and shit. And um, one of the chefs comes out and says, fuck you, Gary. Like he... He points him <laughs> and then, he's like at the it's like at the end he's like oh yeah and by the way fuck you Garrett and then he's like yes chef fuck me <laughs> but he's you know this guy is so uh, optimistic and happy yeah. go lucky he's just happy to be in that environment because he really thinks that serving people is just one of the best things in life and then we cut back to Richie who is. He's calling his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend, uh, Tiffany. Oh, man. That's, uh, so he bought these tickets, these Taylor Swift tickets for himself, his daughter, and Tiffany. And he invites her, and she says, uh, no, I don't think that's going to work for me, brother. And uh, she basically breaks the news that she's been proposed to by some guy, and you see Richie fucking die a little bit because I think there was some small part of him that wished that he could have got gotten back together with his ex-girlfriend. Or she one. is a bitch. Why do you say that? Because the what she said to him right after, oh, don't worry, nothing's going to change between us or anything, implying that she was likely leading him on anyways, like already kind of leading him on, knowing that this was probably going to happen. And again, that's why she wanted to be the one to tell him because, well, I didn't want you to hear from somebody else. But, yeah. And it's like, get, man, man. But you know what, though? I will say this. It gives Richie no distractions. Now his sole motivation can be to make his service for the restaurant to be the best service in town. I think that he, I, I will say, not not to get too far ahead of it, but like, I mean, I think in this episode, he learns about the business of restauranting with customers. Like, purpose, man. For he, him, yeah, for him. Yeah, it gives him the purpose, but I think it teaches him what he was missing. He already had all the tools, though. Right, but he didn't know how to use them. He didn't know how to apply them. And I think seeing them apply it, because if you notice... When he's looking at that one chick and she's like standing and then he's like, oh shit, I think I start to see the pattern. Like he already kind of knew this stuff, but he just didn't know how to apply it. 
to what they were doing. Now he's seen it in action, and oh man, it's gonna be fucking off the chains when when they when the bear actually opens. Right. But yeah, fuck her, man. Like that's that's. I, I'm just glad that Richie, because for for the longest time up until this point, we've kind of seen him as a piece of shit. Yeah. But we understand why. But now we get to see him fucking go 180 and uh, develop into a better person, a, a person that's driven and not by motivation to get potentially back with his ex-wife or girlfriend. It's him improving for himself. Yeah, man, I'm not I'm not like this because I'm in Van Halen. I'm in Van Halen because I'm like this. Look. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Richie will be the reason the restaurant succeeds. Carmi is going to sewer them all. Carmi is going to ruin this for everyone. Yeah, Richie, I mean, at least he fucking has heart. And yes, Carmi likes to be a pretentious asshole with all this ass hattery with fucking cuisine and high-end fucking abstract thoughts with foods and shit. Yeah. Richie understands people. Yep. But we'll 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 add yeah, that. we'll get to that. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that as like the we get to the end of the episode itself. Uh so Richie Richie's kind of piecing together what's happening at the restaurant and the deaths that these people go through to please or to give this hospitable service to their guest and his attitude changes completely so much so that he starts donning a suit much like the staff that already work there and uh uh so Garrett Garrett they they cut to Garrett who's this new character that's introduced and he's serving one of the guests and he's he's serving some type of dish a dessert dish that is some fucking demonic sorcery. It's some kind of tea. And there's like this hibiscus cotton candy. And he fucking dumps it and man, disappears. It, I, I was impressed by that. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Dude, I, listen, man. I was like, hey, man, you, you, made, you made those ladies nut in their pants. You just made me nut in my pants watching that, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for whatever reason... They go through extra lengths to this one guest who had never been to Chicago. I guess they were in the city itself to visit and everything. And one thing they wanted to try was Chicago style pizza. So they wiped their plans for what they had planned for this specific person. And they end up getting as a little bonus dish or whatever. They end up ordering a pizza from another spot, and it, it took 15 minutes or whatever. Richie went to go pick it up, brings it back. The chef makes, like, glorified pizza bites and puts some kind of basil sauce, and Richie gets to take it out. This is his first dish that he gets to take out because uh, he basically bullied the woman that he's been working with to to go serve it, and he, he crushes it. Like, as far as, like, a first impression goes, he... Oh, yeah. he Makes a great first impression, but you know, just wows the wows the guests and everything. And uh, yeah, you can just tell that Richie's like cock is erect for serving, uh, just being a server and going above and beyond for people. And uh, then they have like the scene where Richie's chumming it up with the whole staff, and they're trying these different sauces or whatever the fuck they're eating. And uh, Richie's able to. Basically, get all the all the guesses right, uh, and then it cuts to Richie just, I guess, just enjoying enjoying himself working at this place or interning at this place, and then you see him driving and singing Taylor, uh, Taylor Swift, and it's yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, and then one of the, it, not that it adds anything to the story itself, but just something that was referenced by Richie about the faceless angel. It was actually a B shot that cuts to the faceless angel. And I guess to me, it kind of denotes that, um, fucking cat, you fucking did that. What a dick, man. Did you guys see what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what she did. She was like, did you guys see that? Man, how crazy was that? Even though you did it? Yeah, fucking asshole. What a dick. Yeah, fucking cat. Nope, that's why they have nine lives, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Anyways, talking about Richie himself, talking about the faceless angel, at least to me, what I understood of it is that Richie has been complaining about how things have changed so much in Chicago and all these institutions that added to the history have changed. But he's evolving, too. Like, he's somebody that was a resident within Chicago itself. Yeah. And he used to be caught up in the past and all that shit. But now he's evolving by going to this restaurant. And I don't know. That's that's what I got out of the fucking faceless angel bullshit that the statue he went off about in one of the episodes. But, um... Uh, mm. So real quick to go back to before that, there was this this line that they said when they were having that little meeting with the fuck you Garrett deal. Right before that, he said, "Hey, these this one table, like they research everyone who comes here, mm. which is, I would say, I don't think they do it as as maybe crazy as they should, but." I will say it, it is like that is like what we do, man. This like this mirrors us almost exactly. Like we do that CIA level fucking shit where we're like every person we have on, we're finding out any little fucking thing we can about them to try to like make make an interview good or make it make an experience good for them, right? And they they say, hey, these people have been here. This is their first time in Chicago. And they they uh or not they're in Chicago, but they're teachers or something, and that they've been here and they've been saving up for like months or years to like come here so he said do not drop a check on this table i want to blow their fucking mind it wasn't just them though it was everybody no no i thought it was just that table no it was they said in addition to that table nobody's going to be paying uh any check that night either yeah we're we want to blow fucking we don't blow their fucking minds is what the sentiment was and it was like yes i want to fucking blow people's minds man like God, and then she killed Rex. Son of a bitch, dude. <laughs> Man, the cat gives no fucks today. <laughs> um, <coughs> that's like that is the game rage way. Like blowing people's fucking minds, and you know, like good or bad. Yeah, good or bad, but blowing your fucking mind and giving you something to talk about, and also like we just love doing this shit. Mm-hmm. And the forks thing. That's like creating logos, doing all the little fucking tertiary bullshit that you have to do to make the art of the meal, right? To get to that end phase. Mm. And by making by making Richie do that, like he's never had to do that. That's why he fucking didn't want to do it. But you got to do the basic shit before you can get to the money shot, right? You can't you can't get to serving fucking excellent shit. You don't start there. You get there eventually. And that's like with this thing. Yeah, man, we started out polishing fucking forks a lot. And then eventually we get to, oh, man, we get to be the ones to serve you this fucking mind-blowing thing that one of the waiters overheard you say this, and now we brought you a gourmet deep dish fucking version of pizza, a three-star fucking Michelin star fucking version of that. Fucking, that is mind-blowing. But anyway, sorry, about Yes, I agree, man. It makes the, and maybe I'm just self-inserting myself or projecting, but I very much feel the same way about the tandem or parallels between what's going on with us and some of the shit that happens with the characters, especially Richie, uh, that there is, well, actually, even that Chef Terry woman says that there's, because she had her first restaurant and then it didn't work out, yeah, but she makes a comment about how there's success even later in life. Cause yeah, she, because it was just like this. Yeah, with the original version with glitch leaks mm. that failed miserably. Well, we didn't even put all that much effort to begin with either. True, but I mean, we tried a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But then now it evolved into this. Like the parallels are there. Yeah, maybe that's why I like this show so much. <laughs> Uh, so Garrett, after we get the faceless angel shot, Garrett gives lore on him being an alcoholic and he's talking about the 13 steps and then one one of the things being is that you apologize to everybody and that eventually you end up being in service of other people. So that's where he thinks the reason why he's at this restaurant is because he just loves to serve people. And then Garrett goes... Garrett, one of the funny things that happened was that Garrett points out that 
nobody's gonna remember Richie's name. And the the interning that he was doing at this restaurant was only for like the span of a week. But by the end of it, he had already made some pretty good friendships with some of the people that he ended up working with. And uh, even made an impression on Garrett to be his friend or whatever. And, and then Richie, Richie, I don't, there's some things that are confusing about me because now that he's starting to level up, he ends up asking Garrett, he's like, hey, is there a spot here I can work at this fucking restaurant? Because that's like, treacherous, man. It's it's like, come on, man. You, you, Carmi sent you on this mission to be better and you're going to repay him by working at this other place? Because he basically did the same thing at that that the Christmas dinner party yeah. where he wanted out of the beef and he wanted to work with Cicero to be a mobster. Yeah. So when things aren't going so good, he wants to bail. Yep, exactly. When it's too hard. So, shit. Uh, oh, fuck. Lost my place, but uh, no, here, here we are. Um... Uh, yeah, so then Gary basically tells him, like, I, dude, it's not up to me. It's, uh, if, if we could have you, we would love to have you, but that's not the, it's not going to happen. And then Fack is, like, fucking around with electricity because they're, <laughs> uh, he's just, like, zapping himself and shit. And uh, Richie's, Richie thinks Carmi basically set him up with this gig because... He's trying to fucking get rid of him. Like, he doesn't know... He doesn't have any purpose. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And uh, one of the funny things that happened is, like, when, once he's reaching the end of his little internship, uh, Richie starts, like, kind of cleaning up his own place. Like, he's being a little bit more... Uh, yeah, attentive to his own mess at his own yeah. apartment. Yeah. And uh, the girl, Jess... I don't know if it's Jess or Jessica, but she's the one that's, I guess been a mentor to him as well and she was the one with like the ticketing and all the all the personalizations for all the guests and shit and she just says that she appreciated him and then Richie's kind of walking through the hallway as he sees Carmi and Luca. Luca was the person that Marcus was working with uh, in Copenhagen and then Richie eventually meets uh, Chef Terry who uh, I guess is senior to both Luca and Carmi and um Richie starts building something of a rapport with uh, Terry because both their parents were in the armed forces. And uh, Richie apologizes to Terry for Carmi wasting her time. And then Terry's like, oh, I didn't do this as a personal favor. Like, because Richie has this idea that Carmi fucking sent him there to... I don't know. Like get him out of his hair. Get him out, like, yeah, just to just to get him out of his hair, or uh, that he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing or whatever. But Chef Terry's like, no, he, you're here for a reason. And uh, so then they start talking about how uh, Sh- Chef Terry basically had a first. Her, she had her first restaurant and it didn't work out. And she was just walking the streets for a minute and she found this place and. Uh, she gave it another go with a second restaurant and it basically involved her family and herself to double down and and go for it and she did this at the age of 38 and she just basically reiterated to Richie that you can have success in any part of your life it it just didn't happen it didn't happen for her when she was younger but uh, yeah just reiterating that it's never too late to start over and she just mentioned that her family fronted the money for the second restaurant and Terry learned about her father because her father passed away and she was talking about, uh, both Richie and her were talking about their fathers and how she learned about him through his belongings and stuff and how much uh, how much he was how he, how observant he was to the world and shit. Yeah. Um, and uh, Chef Terry basically tells uh, Richie that Carmi believes in him and that he really is good with people and that was the reason that he was there and then we get like the last bit of the the episode which just every second counts like reiterating yeah, once yeah, more yeah. so yeah it was funny when uh, when Fack was fucking with the electrical 
And he was like, or because they're trying to get the fire suppression system like to work. Yeah. And he's like in there and he's like, and then, like he's, he's like, God damn it. He's like, and Carmi tells him, like, dude, man, be careful. And Richie calls him to tell him, hey man, you're a fucking jag off. I know why you sent me here, you fucking jag off. Don't yeah. fucking make me. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, and then in fact, and then he's like, I think I shocked myself again. It's like, yeah, no shit. And he's like, man, that one kind of hurt. And, like, this is funny. Yeah. Remind me of that time I electrocuted myself on the fucking uh <laughs> smoke the, detector. The fucking smoke detector up there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah, well. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, so what did you think about the episode? This was my favorite. This was the best episode so far, man. This was yeah. this was the best. Um, Richie is, like, now my new favorite character. Fucking, I mean, facts like, right there underneath him. But Carmi is a bitch. I fuck, I And I fucking him. hate him. I hate him. I think, I think he's a. This restaurant, well, when he's, when he's sitting in there, does that happen in the next episode with her? With, uh, when he's sitting in there, little fucking uh there's a little apartment and she comes out and her fucking ass is hanging out yeah and i'm just like get we don't have time for this yeah and then he's asking fact is she my girlfriend is she my girl and then fact's like i don't know man i'm retarded i don't know anything like I don't know. <laughs> he, he, maybe i don't did you ask her oh no he says so he says well how much do you love her and he's like well i love her a whole lot and i was like bitch you've been fucking you only been talking to her for like not even six fucking weeks this is how things end poorly carmy you will be the downfall of this fu- This relationship, I am predicting right now, this relationship will be the downfall of the restaurant. Either that or he fucking sabotages it because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, because he's like, you know what? I don't got time for this. I want to go be with this bitch and fuck everybody else who depends on me. Uh, I'm just going to be with this bitch. It's also very uh, emotionally immature, <clears throat> kind of kind of a stupid. It is. He's, he's just very stupid. He is very stupid. <laughs> I mean, he's- we... I, I guess we should have figured because he did say that he wasn't that great of a student. He he wasn't good with people to, either. His yeah. brother was the one that knew how to how to do all that. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so we start off with episode eight. Unless you had anything else to add. No, nah, nah, that was it. So we start off with epi- episode eight with Sydney walking through the renovated bear. <laughs> um, Claire, I guess Claire and Carmi fucked because. Her butt cheeks are hanging out. And Jesus everything. Christ. Gratuitous ass shot. We did, we, This is not anime. We do not need fan service. We came here to watch a small business go from nothing to be a successful michelin star restaurant. We didn't come here to see fucking ass. All right? If I wanted to see ass, I'd go to Pornhub. Yes. So, Carmi... <laughs> Sorry, that was my rant. Go ahead. Carmi is worried about the fire suppression test because it's something that they haven't passed since they have been working on the restaurant. And to me, it was something of a metaphor for Carmi being worried about things blowing up in his fucking face. Yeah. Which seems to be happening happening pretty frequently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We get B shots of Chicago again, basically to remind us of why we should stay home and never visit Illinois ever. <laughs> never go to the Midwest <laughs> ever because it's all fucking trash. Um... And uh, Ibrahim, who has been absent and uh, basically abandoned his responsibilities of going to the culinary school uh, with Tina. Man, what it, a cocksucker, dude. What, what a fucking I, cocksucker. Dude, Ibrahim, son of a bitch, man. Listen, man, I I kind of want to give him a pass because he was in Black Hawk Down, all right? I kind of yeah. fuck. I, that was some shit. But it's also like, dude, why are you being a bitch? You lived through Black Hawk Down, motherfucker. You lived through Mogadishu Somalian fucking warlords. Yeah. And you're going to start fucking crying about a little fucking, oh, this pressure of this school. Man, get the fuck out of here, you bitch. God so damn it. Tina basically calls him a bitch. Oh, yeah, and rightfully so. That he has refused to adapt to the new circumstances that the restaurant is in. And uh, so then we cut over to Sid and Carmi talking about adapting to their problems because shit just keeps fucking getting piled on and they're very close to opening. Richie and Carmi, uh, I don't know why I mentioned this because it's not really, it doesn't really add anything. It's just kind of a fun reference that they quote the the Blues Brothers with like, Oh, yeah, man. Which was, it was interesting, but... Um, got half, half, what is it? We got a... 106 know, miles to Chicago, whatever the fuck. A full tank of gas, or yeah, half yeah. a tank of gas, a full half, pack of cigarettes, yeah. or half pack of cigarettes, and, and it's, it's, it's dark out and our sunglasses are on or whatever. Yeah. He's like, let's jam, bitch. Yeah. Uh, 
So Marcus is officially back and he just starts whipping up a dish that Sid tries and so much so that he uh, impresses Sid that he has now be achieved a new level of becoming a pastry chef or desserts chef. <laughs> and then Carmi brings up to, I think it was Sid and, Sid and Marcus about how his mother had crashed into the fucking, into their house at one point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that Carmi, for a long time, because of that situation, he hated cannolis. And that one of the things he would like to do is recontextualize his trauma. He wants to take it back. He wants to take it back and make cannolis, savory cannolis for the restaurant. And he runs that by Sid. And uh, then Tina brings in the new employees that they're going to be adding on. Uh, Sugar's trying to get the inspector to show up for the fire suppression test. Um, and then Richie in his new attire with the suits that he's going to be wearing for pretty much the re- like pretty much like Men in Black. This is yeah. the last suit you're going to wear for the rest of your life. Um, Richie apologizes to Sugar for basically being a cunt. And um, he thinks wearing a suit is like wearing a plate of armor and that this is going to help him be an excellent server and uh so they're i think at this point they're one week away from the opening of the bear with the exception of the fire suppression test and then fac asks sugar he's like hey can i bring fan Fran- <laughs> francine or whatever and then he's like she's like francie fac yeah fuck no <laughs> she's like fuck that cunt get her out of here uh I want to know what she, like, what the, I hope that lore gets dropped as to what. What she did. Yeah. Probably stole a boy, boyfriend or some oh, stupid man. bullshit. Probably stupid like that. So, Sid, uh, Sydney is saying Carmi needs to be responsible for, uh, well, actually, uh, sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself. So, Sid and Carmi are, like, talking, and um, Carmi's, like, coming up with shit for the, the menu, and... Sid is obviously getting upset because you, you, you hear Carmi basically mention Claire and she is, she's not exactly inserting herself into what the menu for the restaurant is going to be, but Carmi's opinion about what the menu should be is influenced by Claire and Sydney's like, what the fuck does this bitch have to do with anything? Oh, we're running shit by Claire now, basically. Yeah. And this this is Carmi's fucking mistake. Sydney is an asset, okay? But she is too young and immature to be in the position that she is in. And this is another example of that. Because who cares? You just want to have the best fucking thing possible, right? So why would you shut yourself down to any ideas from anybody, regardless of how stupid or ridiculous they may be, you should be entertaining all, all ideas mm-hmm. and then weed them out from there. But you shouldn't just be instantly going like, oh, fuck her. She doesn't get to say shit. What are we running by shit by her now? That's a lack of maturity. That's a lack of experience. And sure, granted, let's just be honest. I mean, you're not like you are still an employee. Mm. Like you're not a co-owner of this. You, you still are just an employee. And maybe, I don't know what their deal is. I know she's not getting paid for six months or whatever. Probably to be partner. Maybe. I don't, we don't know that for sure. I don't think that they specifically said that. And she didn't say that to like her dad about like, oh, well, I'm a partner in this. But it's like he, he's not treating her like one. So that makes me, leads me to believe that she's not one. He's all, she's, he also kind of dictates <clears throat> what happened. I, I know they've been collaborating with a lot of shit. But he also just abruptly changes things, so it ends up being all him anyways. Right, and at the end of the day, it's it's Carmi featuring Sydney, not Carmi and Sydney making this fucking whatever they're doing, chaos menu or yeah. What do you say? What does he call it? Chaos menu with a purpose or something yeah, like that? With a th- thought, but thoughtful. thoughtful. Yeah, thoughtful chaos. Uh, so then Sid mm-hmm. basically uh, Carmi apologizes to Sid and. Sid basically tells Carmi, like, hey, you need to be responsible for responsible for your choices because you don't even know what the fuck you are to the person you're dating. And you're also fucking up here. So you need to start making some fucking choices. Uh, Richie's testing applicants 
So they, they have these new interviewees for the front of house of the restaurant. And Richie's basically testing people by laying down this napkin and fork in a in the wrong they're positioned incorrectly and he's setting them up so that he can get people that are stars that can see something and fix it and sugar thinks he's fucking crazy and then uh so we see tina like kind of doing the brunt of the work which is picking out the produce and all the equipment and everything or just kind of quality check i suppose and uh fac is trying to sort out the Claire ordeal with Carmi because he doesn't know if he's basically asking Fact like, "Hey, is my is this girl I'm dating is if she my girlfriend? Is, why the fuck? Why the fuck would Fact know, dude? Yeah, Fact's an idiot." <sighs> so uh, Sid and Richie, uh, f- since we know that they kind of haven't gotten along for a long time up until this point, they at least ex- exchange pleasantries with one another and at least are amiable to one another at this point she kind of notes that his uh change in appearance with these suits he kind of looks baller now and um cicero pulls sugar to the side and they're sitting in the car and he kind of breaks down what is the situation with what's at stake he basically got the property appraised and he's not going to be getting as much money as he wants yeah, he's like, and if he re- refinances then they're at like they're like at two and a half percent right now, and he says like we're gonna be at nine and a half, which is basically ten if we refinance. So he's like, if you don't make any money in the first six months, you he's like we can do we can do with a little money. We can't do with no money though. Right. So he's like, you guys got to get this shit cracking. Like month one, you got to be making money. Yeah, you got to make money right away. And it was funny when she says like, oh, why do I need to come outside? And he's like, oh, I don't want to cause a scene. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's fucking great. Uh, so Cicero, Sugar is asking Cicero, like, hey, you had kids, like, would you do it again? And he's like, fuck no. Absolutely not. Fucking not. not, Absolutely not. But if he did, he would definitely be cutting loose more and letting kids make their own mistakes and, uh, having fun with it as opposed to just being a strict asshole. Yeah. Um, and, uh. And then we see Ibrahim like showing a photo of uh, Mikey to Fak, and for whatever reason, something strikes Fak's mind because uh, there was something in that photo that just provoked something in him. And he says, "Jewish lightning." Oh man, that, I, was, I was waiting for this. Yeah, that was. He's like, "Jewish lightning." And he's like, it's Jewish light. He runs and he runs in, and Richie has like these people, the new people sitting there, and he's like telling him shit, and then he just runs up, Jew- <laughs> Jewish lightning, and he's like, we can't, we can't say that, and he's like, it, but it's Jewish lightning. He's like, okay, all right, we can't say. He's like, you can't say that. He's like, hold on, while I go speak with this problematic individual, take a break, I'll be right back. He's like, Jewish lightning, and he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, dude, remember when, uh, what's his name, when Mikey was gonna blow to, blow the place up? He overrode the fire suppression system, and he's like, "That's what that's what the problem is." So I just got to change that out. And he's like, "Oh, you beautiful bastard!" <laughs> you he's beautiful. Like, ba- he's yeah. like, "Go do it." And so then, you know. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, Rich uh, Mike had overridden the fire suppression test so that the place could fucking blow up, and he can collect the insurance money and yeah. be done with that fucking place. And. Uh, the inspector arrives and they do the test and they eventually pass. But as this test is happening, we're getting flashes of people's like past, uh, their mistakes, their failures, what's on what's on the line for them. Like Sid gets flashes of her old business and how it went up in flames and yeah. shit. And Carmi's just uh, well already got enough on his plate. Uh, yeah, but they show like everybody's perspective of like. What would happen if they don't pass the test is all these things that they're insecure about. So uh, immediately afterwards, like they're already getting to work with the with the bear, like cutting up produce and doing all the prep work and everything. And Richie's working on the plating and lighting. And uh, and then we eventually end with Carmi meeting up with his girlfriend and he's cooking for her which was something that was mentioned in like episode five when the, that 
friend of Claire was saying how this person that she was with never cooked for her. And here we see Carmi being a piece of shit. Fucking piece of shit. I will say, I think we skipped the uh, the actual interview that they did with uh, Sugar and uh, Richie, and then that some girl. The woman. Yeah, and like that was a, that was kind of fucking cool when he's sitting there and they do this whole thing. And she's like, "Oh yeah, she's." I think we should add her. Listen, he's like, "Nope, nope," and she's like, "Why not?" And he's like, "Look at the fucking napkins." He's like, "The napkins and the forks were all aligned with the salad plate or whatever, the same exact way." And he's like, "That one in front of her, she sat there and fucking looked at it." And did nothing. That's not that she's not bare material. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, that's right. Fuck that hooker. Get her out of here. <laughs> Next. Move along, bitch. Let's go. He's like, man, if I was sitting there, I would you cannot have that. He's like, that's the level of attention to detail that we need. And if they can't and she was like, What'd you think of that all on your own? And he's like, Yeah, I moved the fuck for you. And she's like, Oh, impress impressive. Most impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was a fucking other, that was another good episode. It was a good follow-up episode to that. The Emperor will not be pleased. We shall, we shall double our efforts. <laughs> <laughs> the Emperor is not as forgiving as I am. Right, Rexy? He's like, fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> he winks. <laughs> what a dick. Um, yeah, this was definitely a nice change of pace from the dinner episode, which was quite lengthy. Oh yeah. Uh, I think... Of the two, episode seven is probably the best episode of the season so far itself. Yep, I agree. Um, these are two good episodes, a lot of lore, a lot of, a lot of character development. Especially for Richie, dude. Oh, yeah. The one person that probably needed it the most out of all the characters. Yep, and now he's all in. Now and he's now, in. now he's the reason. He's going he's gonna to cover, just like he was probably covering for uh, Mikey's drug addiction and helping run the thing when he was fucked, now he's going to cover for Carmi's fucking off and having a girlfriend nonsense. And he's going to be the true driving force that makes the restaurant successful. And I can't believe the indecisiveness. And I know it's because he it's because he comes from a fucked family that he just locks up and yeah. he's he becomes indecisive. But that's the kind of bullshit that sabotages you yourself and also the restaurant and the fact that he took on a relationship. In the midst of all this, oh, fucking ten. unacceptable. Unacceptable. Unforgivable. Unforgivable, dude. Dead to me. Fuck him. Fuck him in his butthole. Yeah. Well, and any other hole that he may have. I can't wait to see how this fucking ends because uh, no, knowing this motherfucker is fucked in the head, he's going to fuck it in some way. Oh, yeah. And I will say, it's next episode is, is it for season two, nine and ten. That's it. And then the, 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 the week after, we will be starting the new season. Mm-hmm. And interesting to see if what fucking happens. Yeah, so. this is, I mean, this is them working at the bear fully up. Op- <clears throat> the bear is fully operational. <laughs> ah, this restaurant is fully operational. <laughs> <laughs> Your friends didn't know that. <laughs> Man, dude, I like how we can make Star Wars references out of fucking anything. It's mostly Palpatine, too. That's true. That's because we are Palpatine. Like, that's just, that's us. <laughs> It's weird because he's old and creepy, and it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, cool. We got anything else to add? No, that was it. Excellent. All right, well, thank you guys for listening. If you want to hear more, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can hear the full list of podcasts at GameRageMagazine on Instagram and TikTok, at GameRageMag on Twitter slash X. All Gas, No Trash official for Adam, and go listen to the All Gas, No Trash podcast if you like music, good music, or if you like hearing people talk shit about bad music. That's your jam. Anyways, it was fun. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Oh, hey there, buddy. It's me, 1930s announcer guy. Here to congratulate you on making it through this episode. As our heroes are getting in their jalopies and riding off into the literal sunset, they wanted me to tell you thanks for listening to their radio broadcast. And should you be so kind as to follow them on some fancy schmancy radio station publication called Instagram and TikTok at Game Range Magazine, and on some other thing called Twitter slash X at Game Range Mag. Also, they uh, wanted me to inform you and ask if you could be so kind again as to uh, visit something called the website at www.gameragemagazine.com. Uh, I don't know what that is, buddy, but uh, you should probably go do those things. And, you know, don't forget to tune in next time to the Game Rage Movies and TV Radio Broadcast.